Hello, good day, everyone. I'm um, good news from the King's Farm and Industry. Uh, while we are projecting our, our, the start point of our work at uh, Kuji, I make uh, Kuji at Abuja. I make reference to the deception in snake farming using uh, snake eggs and hatchlings to deceive intended ten, ten farmers. Some persons were talking against me, but today I just want to clear those things so that they know exactly what it is. You see, let's just start from the very base, the very foundation. Snails were designed to lay. So whether you like it or not, they will lay. That's number one. Then the number two aspect of it is that some of their eggs will be fighters, some not, will not be fighter. So that is to say, snail mates in order to lay fighter eggs. Snail don't mate to lay eggs. Snail don't mate to lay eggs. Snail only mates to lay fighter eggs. So whether they mate or not, they will lay eggs. So, when all conditions are met, those eggs live that are fighter will hatch. You get me? So, one of the things we see online every day is that uh, you see consultants, you see marketers posting pictures of their snail laying eggs and then the, the eggs hatching into juvenile or coming to this business. So, uh, you see the hatchlings, you see this, you see that, you see the other one. Yeah. Then, you see the new... Uh, intending farmers or the new farmers that you're joining projecting their eggs and uh, my snail late 10 eggs today late 20 eggs today these things keep motivating people and they keep jumping into snail farming without really understanding what is involved first of all i want you to know the challenge we have in snail farming is not about snail laying eggs it's not about eggs hashing the major challenge we have in snail farming is managing the hashlings to adult stage that is the challenge. That is the challenge. You get me now. First of all, let's quickly look at it today. Like this particular farm we are, the other day we projected what is going on here. So let's just show you again so that you know exactly what and what we are talking about. Bring the camera here. Now, you see the things going on here. You get me now. See, all over the pen here, you can see we have dead hashlings, dead uh, medium sized snakes. Uh, sorry, uh, dead hashlings. We have uh, grower snakes. Uh, all, the, all of them are dead, but the juvenile. Coming down to this same place, you have them everywhere. You can see. They're everywhere. Now, coming down to this same pen, bring the camera. Lower the camera, please. You can see they are everywhere. They are just everywhere. N not, not only, not only on these pens I just showed you. They are everywhere. Now, the question I want to ask is this: Are you sure? Are you sure that when this snail started laying and when this eggs when the hash the eggs hashed into this juvenile we have here that that have died already the farmers will not be happy yeah you could see the smile and the happiness the motivation to explore more to invest more in this business but when this all of these snakes died are you sure the farmer will be happy this is where the challenge lies. They don't show you these things going on. They don't want you to see these things. All they want you to see is that the egg laid, hash. That is the only thing. The less the eggs incubated, hash. They don't want you to see this process, and they don't project it to anyone. There are certain things that are involved. There are certain things that are involved. If your hash list will grow to marketable size. Number one, I don't recommend intensive system because it encourages mortality. So if your snails will grow to table size, you must first understand one thing, housing system. Housing system, I'll be saying this, come into play. Housing system, if you choose this system, you're going to get these results, no matter any high test. 
no matter the management practices put in place, no matter the cost that you put in place to manage it, no matter the professional that will manage it. Then, the number two aspect is adaptability of this harshness in their new environment. This is a very simple question. Are you sure all of these things that died here, are you sure if those things were there under these beings we have here, are you sure they would die? The sincere answer is no, because snakes have been living under this under plant for generations before now, before ours, and they are still existing. So that is to say, the best environment that can help you sustain your harshness is normal crop environment, which the greenhouse provides. Secondly, why do snakes die, most especially the harshness in intensive system? We have cleaning. You see, some of us don't understand that when we say snake need a uh, humid environment, there's a clear difference between humid environment and dirty environment. What some of, what some of us provide for the snakes through intensive system is actually dirty in environment, not humid environment. Not all humid environment is good enough for your snakes. So let us just get it clear and now snake poo most especially the harshness their poo kill them faster than even poison itself so as they are moving around pooing everywhere in the pen whenever as they come in contact with those poo walking crawling on it to and fro they will begin to die that's one they will begin to die then we have them moving around their slime which also affect them. Today we have the issue of drowning. When you feel you give your you use a bigger bowl for the snakes because they don't drink water from soil surface from, from a water surface they go deep into it go to the base and then for we have food, uh, food poisoning some of us don't know now that most of the crop or most of the feed and the vegetables we are feeding to our snakes, sorry, the fruits and vegetables we are feeding to our snakes, actually contain herbicide and pesticide. I've been saying this and I will still say it again. It's another serious issue. That in the greenhouse, when uh, when snakes feed on anything that they are having a challenge digesting, they know another plant they will move to. That they will feed on it and it will help them to digest it fast. But here, here in the intensive system, we don't have any of these things. So I will continue to say it. And then we have uh, what's name? The harsh environment, the green what's name? The intensive system provide. There are just the, the, the list is endless. But in the greenhouse, for instance. You see, they have room to move around. They have space. They have rooms to move around. Let's just take this green environment, these vegetables, for instance. Imagine your harsh leaves are here. Today they are in this end. Tomorrow they are in the other end. They feed on life plants. That's what they feed on. Life plants. They have not other that feed on life plants. You get me? So. The issue of cleaning the farm is another thing because their waste, their, their waste also serve as fertilizers for the soil. So I'll continue to say, and I will tell you again: don't be deceived by the by consultants and uh, what's name marketers projecting harsh links on social media. Don't be deceived by them projecting numbers of eggs laid in their farm on social media. Yeah, this is the this is always the end result. Just this is always the end result. So I will tell you, when you are ready and willing to invest in snare farming, the first thing you should consider is housing system. And in the housing system, me, I'm encouraging you, you are advising you go for greenhouse. That will be your best option. Thank you very much. And once again, I'm good news from the King's Farmer industry. In case you need feed, you need calcium, you need uh, breeder snakes to start your farm, and also you want to set up your farm, I'm sorry, 
we don't set up intensive system. What we don't practice, we don't preach. So please, if you want to set up your greenhouse, don't forget to reach us through this line, 081-140-666-59. Thank you very much.